Uh, this is K Prabhan, Riz Scholar. So today we are going to take the unit number three, which is about the ecosystem. In this unit, we are going to learn about what are the structure and the function of ecosystem, what is an ecosystem, and what are the producers, decomposers, and consumers. What is the energy flow is seen in the ecosystem, and what are the different cycles which supports the ecosystem. So here uh, if you see the definition of an ecosystem is all about the abiotic and biotic factors which influence in the environment to for the survival of living beings. That is the abiotic factors like sunlight, water, air, oxygen and biotic factors those are the plants and animals microorganism which are interlinked with each other and makes an ecosystem okay here the structure is the climatic conditions which are favorable for the plants and animals and the functions are like what is the use of the ecosystem with this ecosystem how the different types of ecosystems are formed upon depending upon the geographical or climatical situations, the animal adapt themselves, all those things we are seeing. Producers are the plants which prepare their own food with the help of sunlight. Consumers are those uh, animals which consume producers, that is they depend on the producers. We call them as secondary consumers or second tropic level. When comes to the carnivores, these are the third tropic level or we can say tertiary consumers. And the end one is decomposers or detrivores, where the dead body is eaten up by dead uh, microorganisms like bacteria fungi which in return turns to the soil and makes it fertile fertile and whole this process happens in a food chain what is a food chain food chain is nothing but the interlink relations relation which is seen with grass for example we take agriculture land where the agriculture land is being <coughs> man-made one uh, where the insects are eaten up by the grass and here what we are seeing the insects are eaten up by frog and the frog is in eaten up by eagle. So this chain of interlink between the producer, consumer and carnivorous is a food chain. When the link is between 3 to 4 chains, food chains, it is called as a food web and pyramid, ecological pyramid, pyramid is, is a triangular shape one where at the base we place the producers, those are the plants and at the middle we place herbivores or consumers and at the top or apex we keep carnivores which is why we say it as a pyramid ecological pyramid and the energy flow or energy cycle is that whatever the energy is received from the sun during the whole process of food preparation and storage by the producer is the energy or the amount which is n transferred to the next level that is the consumers and the carnivores where some of the energy is being transformed or released in the form of heat and the remaining energy what is being gradually taken up by the levels consumers and carnivores get decreases this is called as energy flow and coming to the uh, next one is called ecological section how to make an ecosystem successful See, the ecosystem is mainly depends upon 
the climatic conditions, the geographical areas, abiotic and biotic features. To make that one, we should see that the species which are present should not be disturbed. If any of the species in that particular ecosystem is disturbed, we say as ecological imbalance and the species which is getting endangered and extinct is known as a keystone species. So, the ecological system gets imbalanced. If we see the types of ecosystem, what are the functions and structure, here what we are referring is in an ecosystem all the biotic and e abiotic factors influence a lot to make a an ecosystem. If any one of them get disturbed, the whole ec ecological or ecosystem gets disturbed. And uh, the different kinds of ecosystem what we are seeing are two types, one is aquatic and another one is terrestrial ecosystem. In this terrestrial ecosystem what we are seeing, it is of three types that is forest ecosystem grassland ecosystem and desert ecosystem. Whereas, the aquatic ecosystem consists of ponds, lakes, rivers and oceans. If we see stagnant water, we called as a lentic, this kind of ecosystem which is where the water is stored the rainwater is stored in the form of natural bodies in the form of rivers, lakes and ponds whereas lotic that is a stagnant running or flowing water which when rain pours the water drains off into the soil or to the lakes or the, uh, to the oceans where they support a different kind of ecosystem. So, these are the <coughs> topics which have been covered which we are going to cover in that unit 3 of ecosystem. Now, let us move to the fourth unit of biodiversity and its conservation. So, what is biodiversity? Biodiversity according to Benson, he tells that the rich variability and viability of living species in a particular community or a habitat in the environment makes a biodiversity. Here what we are seeing, biodiversity consists of different kinds of species and the variability is so different that different species get adjusted and survive on each other and the richness is seen in a happy environment. This is called as a biodiversity. So, biodiversity and its conservation is our fourth topic which in which we are going to see about the biogeographical classification of biodiversity and what is the value what we get from the biodiversity that is consumptive value productive value, optional value, ethical value, then aesthetic value and last but not least social value. So, biodiversity, biodiversity when we say about biodiversity, it includes an individual species to a species of same community and the same species when gets into a community of an ecosystem makes it as a biodiverse. For example, if a individual is there, a deer, when the population increases of same deer into a, it turns into a species. When we see <coughs> uh, deer along with other animals like uh, rhinoceros, tiger, leopard, zebra, all this kind of animals living together, then we say is a, it as a community and this community 
having an ecosystem <coughs> we say as biodiversity so what are the biogeographical diversity biodiversity we are seeing in our india so if you see there are like almost rich biodiversity present in the our country india so there are almost like eight if you see the himalayan part where the ladakh cold temperature is there so that comes under the himalayan biodiversity as you move down little bit uh, down you will be seeing the north east biodiversity where you will be uh, seeing the states uh, national level like assam mizoram nagaland there is a different biodiversity as you go towards the center that the central or rajasthan or the western plateau central deccan there you will see a different biodiversity as you move down towards the uh, western ghats and eastern ghat there is also a different diversity if you go towards the bottom that is kerala and tamil nadu there you will see orissa west bengal you will see a, a coastal uh, biodiversity so how we are saying that the biodiversity so many diversities are present in one country because the climatic conditions what we are talking is abiotic factors support different kind of animals and plant species which are there and they make an ecosystem in a, a beautiful way so here the value what we are talking with reference to the biodiversity it is conceptive value for example if we take the products which we are getting from the this biodiversity it is utilized in a very proper way for example people who are living in the coastal line or who are in the northeastern places they utilize the natural resources which are present in the in their surrounding forest in a proper way like fruits vegetables in a very limited way they don't take it in a ex, in a large quantity so that uh, the next generation can have it here what we are seeing in this conceptive value there the main focus about uh, focus from the local people is about how much they are taking it is concerned to that particular place they are not referring or they are not worried about the other people whom they need to feed so they take only the products which are sufficient for themselves and their family members they don't use it excess of whatever the products available even though it is available they see that and make sure that it is utilized properly and also they make sure that it has to be conserved if anything is getting lost they make sure that it should regenerate or regrow and the uh, ecosphere should not get damaged when comes to the optional value what we are seeing in this biodiversity is that the optional value is of biodiversity is what is that like uh, the, the products which are been utilized are kept for the future generation means here what we are seeing is that we are not utilizing wholly the available products if we know one particular or any uh, concerned medicinal value plants or edible plants are there we are using science and technology to make it more so the optional value is like it is kept for the future generation and it is utilized in a proper way so the social and ethical value the social values the social biodiversity is that here we the people who are nearby to that particular region 
know the values the traditional values which are been passed down from generation to generation through their ancestors that those plants having a very important medicinal values for example chikona which uh, then uh, atropa then so these uh, plants having a lot of medicinal values and they cure their uh, diseases which are most frequently happens in that particular region like malaria for that chinkona uh, plant is there and even <coughs> even other uh, neem trees so they know the value of that one and what is the ethical so ethical value they make that that people should not kill the animals to make an awareness that these animals are friendly with us or they have an importance they resemble them with the gods and they give uh, more like aesthetic values like they spiritually connect animals with the gods like uh, ganesha with the elephant head so that people stop killing those animals for ivory so <coughs> in a in particular area like like a country like us we respect all most all animals like cow uh, elephant because they we treat them or we interconnect them interlink them with the gods here the optional value matters a lot because here we are knowing the importance of the biodiversity which is present in and around us and the geographical area which is seen and we are making sure uh, make sure making sure that it has to be preserved for the next generation because we are not aware of the properties of these uh, biodiversity biodiversity species which are present in and around us so we might we might uh, be seeing in the next generation there will be technology advance will be there and we don't know which plant is going to help or which animal is going to may play a key role in this one so biodiversity plays an important role in global national and local levels so biodiversity why it is globally taken because the biodiversity what is understood is that with the biodiversity we can reduce the global warming okay because now the greenhouse gases have increased so much that it is depleting the ecosystem and it is damaging the whole environment so the there is a difficult in survival so to avoid that one so the global bodies have recognized that the developed nations have understood the importance of biodiversity they have seen that by maintaining a good health by uh, plants and animals the ecosystem runs and it controls the global warming so it has begun an important issue in the global war global warming so at the global level people understood and they are more concerned about what is happening in and around them because due to the global warming what we are seeing in the recent days there are natural disasters happening even the keystone species for example in kenya recently we have seen that white giraffe was been killed uh, the male female and its calf so they have seen that these kind of activities are going on and the next generation won't be seeing this kind earthquakes are happening soil erosion is happening tsunamis are coming so all these things are happening due to ecological imbalance and the biodiversity is getting uh, Uh, diversified due to va- various reasons uh, reasons so they have kept a concern like here the national level or local level biodiversity concerns have been taken so in the national level we have seen that there are plenty of 
hotspots uh, like wherever the biodiversity is uh, uh, is to be pre uh, preserved there the they have kept restriction to human entry and even the natural habitat should not be disturbed so they have made some policies where these kind of activities should be uh, stopped or if anything is going there they have to be punished so the national level like for example in india we see eastern guards and western guards where the natural flora or biodiversity is so much that even uh, the interruption of a human can cause lot of problems so they have kept the uh, they have restricted the zone of uh, restricted the zone of people entering into that particular biodiversity region so the government is more concerned because they have known the importance of the biodiversity and even from the global uh, point of view they are aware what is happening in the other countries due to unpreserved biodiversity why is india called as a mega biodiversity second one hotspots of biodiversity which are present around the world and in our country and what are the threats to the biodiversity wildlife hunting poaching so these kind of threats what is happening how to control it what are the endangered species of plants and animals and what are the conservative steps to preserve this biodiversity that is in suit biodiversity and an exude biodiversity conservation uh, so just to give a quick review on today's topics in the fourth unit i will just go through it what is a biodiversity biodiversity is the rich variability and viability in an environment where the living organism live and make it habitable and what are the values we add it the values are like social value ethical value aesthetic value optional values so these values are nothing but what are the what the benefit we are getting from the biodiversity it means the uh, for a local use like f food fruit and medicinal plants when we go when it comes to the commercial that like we can take the molecules uh, derived from the plants and make it for large production and here the mo most important thing in the biodiversity what we have seen is biodiversity is uh, divided into three types one is ecologically biodiversity genetic biodiversity and species diversity in species diversity what we are seeing only one particular species is getting deviating and making it as a biodiversity in genetic biodiversity what we are seeing in due course of time in a species there are some changes happening in the gene level and the gene pool is getting adjusted to the climatic conditions to which the environment and they are getting themselves adapted to themselves adapting themselves so in genetic uh, biodiversity what we are seeing is the gene pool the gene pool of a particular species is getting adjusted to its biodiversity and ecological ecosystem ecological biodiversity where the species uh, biodiversity and genetic biodiversity together making an ecological biodiversity so the definition of genetic biodiversity is the change in the gene pool due to evolution or due to gradual change in the environment due to climatic condition due to shortage of food due to migration immigration and adapting themselves to the environment is known as genetic biodiversity and species diversity within a species means when an individual in an ecosystem is having only its own species 
making a population individual population of same species then we are calling as species diversity example deer one deer is an individual and having a deer many deers is a species diversity if a species of different uh, kinds of deers then we are saying it is a genetic diversity because if the deer is in the polar uh, in the cold cold climatic region the deer adapt itself to the cold atmosphere uh, cold environmental so the genes which are present in the moderate or temperate uh, deer will differ in that other cold or other part uh, deer when a species having many other species apart from deer rhinoceros zebra lion tiger cow sheep goat or giraffe elephant all this together makes a different diversity that is called ecological diversity means here what we are seeing all kind of plants animals reptile invertebrates vertebrates amphibians all these are living together in a particular diversity then we are saying as a biodiversity of ecology so it is an ecological biodiversity so by this i will uh, close the class we uh, by this we will end this session we will continue the next session tomorrow thank you